Hi everyone and welcome along to the Ergonomically Speaking podcast, the podcast that aims to help you reduce and even eliminate work-related discomfort. I'm your host Neve Pentney of Boyne Ergonomics. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you're able to take away some useful practical advice from this podcast to help you reduce your own risk of discomfort at the workplace or help manage the risks among the people that you might be responsible for. So now that we know why we're here, let's get started. Hello, hello, and welcome along to another episode of the Ergonomically Speaking podcast. For today, we're going to be talking about resolutions. It's 2024, and my New Year's resolution for you guys is to ditch the laptop for your long term health, your long term well being. And we're going to talk about why. So, for most of us, how we work obviously changed dramatically in March 2020 and look some of it's been positive in terms of flexibility and to be able to connect with each other remotely and that kind of thing but the one enduring negative that was present at the start and I still see now is how attached we are to our laptops and I see this both with people who are working from home people when they're in the office, even when you've got all the peripherals, you've got your keyboard, you've got your mouse, you've got your screen, I still see quite a high percentage of people still actually using the laptop as their primary keyboard, their primary screen, even when they have the peripherals available. So I'm going to have a little bit of a look into this now about maybe why we're so attached, what's the risks associated with this attachment and what we can do to help. So If I look at the reasons or what I think and have found to be the reasons over the last few years, really, I think we can categorize them into two reasons why people are so attached to their laptops. The first one is habit. So if we all remember, which I cannot believe is nearly four years ago, but if we all think back when most of us were sent home to work, we were literally handed a laptop or a laptop was sent out to us and that was it. So when people started to work from home, most people were using just the laptop because obviously we thought this was going to be short term. And this continued for quite a while and and even now still persists with some people. While companies are kind of navigating the change from this kind of emergency home working situation into this more longer term remote and hybrid style. And during this time, many people just They just became used to how the laptop felt, particularly the keyboard, into the tactile feel of the keyboard, the size of the keyboard compared to what most people would have used before, which would have been the traditional office keyboard. And obviously with the laptop keyboards, most of them are quite low profile. They're quite compact. They're quite narrow. And then this just became what people are used to. So then even when they got the standard kind of office keyboard sent out, most employees will tell me anyway that they found it uncomfortable to use. They found it felt weird. It felt different. So they just chose to use the laptop keyboard instead. Um, And another reason I think that kind of falls into habit too is if you look at people who maybe might not have a great typing technique. From chatting to people, I found they preferred having the screen physically close to the keyboard because they spent a lot of the time looking down at the keyboard and that way they were kind of looking down the keyboard glancing back up at the screen and they kind of felt that they could have the keyboard and the screen in their line of sight at the same time and what I found happened here with these people is that even when they got their big screens they continued to use the laptop as the main screen and using their external screens as like secondary or reference screens. That's kind of where habit came into it. The second reason most people report to me why they use their laptop, especially at home, it's space, a lack of space. So there's still quite a lot of people who are working from home and they may not have a dedicated desk. They may not have room for one. They may be using um, areas in the house that have to be used for different reasons. So the workstation has to be put out every morning, tidied away in the evening, tidied away at the weekend. And even when they have been supplied 
with equipment from their employer, like the screens and the keyboards, they're sitting in the corner or they're sitting in the box because people just don't feel they have the space to work on anything other than just the laptop. So those are the two reasons I find most people are continuing to use the laptop at home and in the office. And it's something I talk to people a lot. And the main thing I find is people don't really understand why this is a problem, which I find really funny. So people like myself who work in this space, like we are bombarded with information about why this isn't right. And, and we know this just from our jobs and from our studies and from our backgrounds, why laptop use isn't great. And we think that everybody knows it, but actually they don't. So we're going to look at why why do I discourage, why should we discourage frequent and long-term use of a laptop? Now, if you're an employer listening to this, the main part, aside from kind of employee health and wellness, which we'll get into, but one of the main things you should be concerned about is compliance. So if you are based in Ireland, from a compliance perspective, here, our regulations state very clearly that as a minimum, if somebody has a computer workstation, the screen should be able to swivel and tilt easily and freely. It should be possible to use either a separate base for the screen or an adjustable surface. And the keyboard should be tiltable and separate from the screen. And that bit is incredibly important. As you know, you cannot achieve any of those three using just a laptop. Now, obviously, there's a lot more regulations. There's a lot more guidelines. But these are the three that specifically concern the laptop. And if you, as the employer, don't make sure that DSE workstations meet these very, very minimum standards and the others, you're in breach of health and safety regulations. So we've got a compliance and a legal issue there. Secondly, from the user perspective, it is not possible to achieve what we would call the optimum or what I would say is the least stressful DSE computer position solely with a laptop. Like, not to kind of state the obvious, but generally speaking, when you're using a laptop, and I'm not talking about your detachables, when you're using a laptop, the keyboard and the screen are attached. Because of this, you can either have the keyboard in the right position or the screen in the right position, but not both at the same time. Can't do it. And the last reason is given the amount of computer screen based tasks within any given working day, particularly on the days you're at home, you kind of do need to look at screen size. Like if you're looking at a 14, 15, 16 inch screen, for a lot of people, it's simply too small to be able to comfortably view the likes of spreadsheets and documents. And of course, look, I know you can increase text size, control and scroll, you can make things bigger, you can make things smaller. But by making things bigger, it comes a little bit more cumbersome, I suppose. You've got to use the mouse, the touchpad, the keyboard to try and navigate around the screen to read everything. And keeping everything that it fits in the screen can sometimes make things quite small and it can cause maybe eye strain and poor posture. So if I'm putting it really simply, using the laptop as like the only computer device, it just requires you to compromise either in your posture and your eye comfort, which means that to get one area comfortable, well, then you're going to have to have extra strain on another area. So you're sacrificing the health and comfort of one part of your body for another. So it's just impossible to get it right. If we look at it in terms of ergonomic risks, so you've, you've heard me speak about these in other podcasts. What are the ergonomic risks associated with such and such? So if we look at the laptop use, look, there's any amount of studies. If you go searching, there's any amount of studies conducted over the years looking into the negative impact of laptop use on the musculoskeletal system. The main areas of pain and discomfort that I would speak to people about is, and this is included in the studies too, and from my own experience, are your neck, your shoulders, your upper back, your lower back, headaches and eye fatigue, eye strain. The risks, the risk factors that cause this discomfort are your adverse postures, contact stress, which is in a surprising one, but I'll, I'll chat to you about it, prolonged static postures, repetitive movements and actual 
psychological stress. And these can be present at any home or any office workstation. The biggest one is your adverse, awkward postures. The other ones are present, but, and of course, you can have like poor posture at any workstation. I'm not saying this is a unique feature of a laptop workstation, but the degree of the adverse posture, the degree to which the body is, is out of alignment away from its midline, is so much greater when a laptop is involved versus a desktop computer. So it's a huge amount of stress in the body. If you're using a laptop, and it's sitting flat on the work surface, like most people do. Or it's on, you're sitting on the sofa, it's on your lap. The laptop screen, if we're talking about using the laptop only now, the laptop screen is much lower than your resting eye line. So when I talk about resting eye line, what I mean is you're sitting back in your chair, nice and relaxed, you're looking straight ahead. Your head is balanced on top of your shoulders, you're not looking up, the head's not up, the head's not down, it's just neutral and you're looking forward. That's your resting eye line. If you are, even now, using a laptop, sit, not dead upright, but just sit in a nice upright position and look straight ahead and look at the difference between the height of your eye line and the height of that laptop screen. It's way, way below it. So for you to comfortably look at what's on the laptop screen, you're going to have to look down. Even if you start off upright with just the eyes looking down, which I do see some people do, after a few minutes, your head's going to come forward, your neck's going to flex. Then what happens after a few more minutes? Your shoulders start to roll forward and your body starts to lean forward. And holding these positions for a long time increases the workload on your muscles. So if you have this prolonged looking down, this prolonged flexion of your neck, well, your neck muscles and shoulders have to hold the weight of your head. As you move away from the midline, You've not only got to manage the 5 kg or so weight of your head, you've also got to counteract the full force of gravity as you lean forward. This causes your muscles to get tired. Then they start to recruit the muscles of the upper back, the mid back and down. And these all start to get tired. The spine, the shoulders become rounded. This causes strain on your muscles and your ligaments and your tendons. And this is very similar to postures you see with people using their mobile phones and can cause discomfort that is generally known as tech neck, which is like an umbrella term for aches and pains associated with kind of modern technology and positioning. It's the looking down. It's the prolonged and frequent looking down, rounding of the shoulders, forward lean of the body. Now, what happens there? So that's your adverse postures, and you'll have seen it. And if you want to jump onto the blog associated with this, you know, as always, you'll see images there of it. What I do find though, especially at home, a lot of laptop users, they try and counteract or reduce this kind of adverse posture of the neck by lowering either themselves physically in a chair compared to the laptop screen or by elevating the laptop to try and bring it a little bit higher. Now, this may address the kind of neck positioning looking at the screen, but it's going to cause a problem somewhere else. Like we said, the compromise. So, if you elevate the laptop and you're still using the laptop keyboard, well, then you're going to cause awkward postures of the elbows, the shoulders, the wrists while you're trying to type on the keyboard. If you lower yourself down to try and, and meet the level of the laptop, well, what's going to happen then is you're going to have shoulders up near the ears arms out by the side so this kind of awkward position of the shoulders where you're going to have them kind of winged as we call it where the elbows are out to the side or you're going to have your shoulders kind of up close to your ears and that's all to try and bring your elbows and forearms into a comfortable position for typing you're trying to balance yourself between the keyboard and the screen and it's not possible these adverse shoulder postures actually or even in a relaxed position if you're too low is where we get the contact stress. So the contact stress related to laptop use, it's not necessarily specific to the laptop. It comes into play when you are trying to adjust yourself and get into these awkward positions, trying to balance the right position for the keyboard and the right position for the screen. And this obviously 
increases the risk of discomfort at these points of contact. And because the screen and keyboard are connected, the other issue is you can't get them at the right distance. So generally speaking, the keyboard itself should be about eight to 10 centimeters from your body to allow you to kind of type in a relaxed position with a nice relaxed shoulders, arms roughly by your side. However, the recommended screen distance is arm's length away. So either your keyboard is close enough or your screen is at the right distance but not both. And this, again, this compromise, what I find is people maybe push the keyboard back so they've got these adverse postures of the shoulders as they reach forward or even more flexion of the neck if they have the keyboard close and the screen is too close. Now, connecting the laptop to a monitor and using a keyboard is not always enough to reduce this because what does tend to happen is People, if the laptop is present, you are going to use it as an additional screen. We all want more screens. There's so much information to intake. We all want more screens. If you are connecting the laptop to the monitor and you are using the laptop as a second screen, having it positioned still flat on the table, be it under your screen or to the left, to the right, flat on the table, is still going to encourage these adverse postures of the neck and will bring into play the repetitive movement as you look up and down and up and down between the two screens. If we look at the other way that people do, which is good as long as your eyesight's good, which is elevating the laptop and use a keyboard and mouse if you're stuck for space. While in theory it should improve your posture if you are struggling with your eyesight, if you are having issues reading the screen, well, what will happen is because the images are so small, It can cause people to lean forward when they're trying to read, you know, spreadsheets or high text documents because it's difficult for them to read when they sit back in the chair. So using the keyboard and mouse and elevating the laptop screen should in theory help, but it may not always be enough. And we'll come to that later on. So aside from eye strain and musculoskeletal issues, What are the other health impacts of using a laptop? Now, these do tie into adverse postures. It's more than just your musculoskeletal system here that is going to suffer. There can be a huge knock-on effect on the digestive system, your respiratory and endocrine system, your circulatory system, and the quality of your sleep and your overall mood. So we'll just dive into this very, very briefly, but I think it is important to note it. It is not just your neck and shoulders that we're worried about when we are looking at using a laptop. So if we go back to the kind of hunched, rounded position that we often see when people are using a laptop only, this rounded shoulders and back compresses the abdomen. So if you think of it, you can even practice it now while you're sitting here listening to me. If you're sitting upright, you know, there's a nice bit of room in your abdomen. But as you start to lean forward and forward and round yourself down, you are compressing your abdomen and this can have an impact on the digestive system. This can actually reduce digestive function, compressing the organs of your digestive system and it can increase the risk of acid reflux and constipation. If you suffer from anything like that, an IBS, this kind of thing, if you are compressing your digestive system, there's obviously not the usual amount of space for it to function you'll also have reduced blood flow which I'll touch on later on but you are going to essentially slow down and compromise your digestive function so you could get symptoms like acid reflux and constipation it's also going to impact your respiratory system again this rounded shoulders and the back it causes the muscles in your chest to tighten and that's going to limit the expansion of your rib cage as you breathe. And it stops the diaphragm from fully opening. So what happens is instead of taking these nice, relaxed, deep breaths down into your lungs and letting your rib cage expand, you're kind of breathing into the top of your lungs a little bit more. Your breath can be slightly more rapid, definitely more shallow, and this is going to activate the nervous system. So this type of shallow breathing, this type of rapid breathing, shallow breathing, 
essentially puts the body into a state of stress and can trigger then the release of the stress hormones which if you are not exercising and if you are not actually responding to a threat we don't need those hormones floating around and that can have a knock-on effect on the body as a whole but the other stress or the other issue with this position again coming to the rounded leaning forward position is if you are doing this type of breathing in this type of rounded position it's going to cause extra strain on your main primary breathing muscle and what's going to happen is we have to keep breathing we can't stop breathing so the body's just going to find a workaround the body's going to recruit other muscles to help with breathing usually it's the muscles and neck which they become overworked they're trying to hold your head in place they're looking up and down between the screen and the keyboard they're now trying to help your lungs with the breathing they're totally overworked you're going to get neck pain you're going to get shoulder pain very likely get headaches and migraines all because we are in this rounded bent forward posture then we have to look at the cir- circulatory system i can never say that word adverse postures poor postures awkward postures reduce blood flow to the muscles and the internal organs and that can affect their ability to function which kind of circles back onto the digestive system we we need these organs to get blood so that they can do their job. Increased pressure on the veins, especially in the legs, can damage them and cause varicose veins. Again, we don't want to be sitting in this rounded position. We want the blood to be able to flow as it should in and out of the organs doing its job. Impact on sleep. Well, if you are in these adverse postures, if you are rounded and tight, If your digestive system isn't working great, if you've got a sore neck, if you're in this position all day, you're going to have tension in your muscles. It's going to be difficult to relax. You're going to have muscular pain. It can make it difficult to get comfortable when you're sleeping, especially if you think about the neck. And if your neck is anyway sore, it can be really uncomfortable trying to sleep. It can make it hard to fall asleep. And it's going to increase the likelihood that you're going to be waking up during the night. And this is obviously going to reduce the amount of sleep you get and the quality of the sleep you get. All these factors compounded together can, of course, then have a psychological impact, have an effect on your mood. It can make us feel stressed. It can make us feel worried. It can make us feel tired, feel a little bit down. I did do an episode before about how stress and discomfort are related. So, If you're stressed, you're going to have increased tension in your muscles. It's going to have an impact on your hormones. That's going to have an impact on your other systems. But equally, if you're feeling sore and if you're tired and you can't get sleep, that's going to increase your stress. So it can have a huge, huge impact on me. Those there are the reasons why I am always trying to encourage people to Get off your laptop. There is no reason in 2024 why you should be working on just a laptop. There's any amount of different size and different options of peripherals available from the very, very cheap to the very, very expensive. All budgets, all space requirements can be catered for. There's lots we can do to try and reduce this. So realistically, if you're using your laptop for more than 30 minutes a day, we do need to consider the risk to your body. So what can we do? Well, as always, when we identify risks, we want to reduce them. So if we look at reducing your adverse posture, so trying to get ourselves out of this rounded slumped position, the only way to reduce the adverse posture is that we see with a laptop is to separate the keyboard and screen. And I don't mean by physically breaking the laptop. What I do mean is the screen and the keyboard should be different devices. So in the ideal world, essentially your laptop should be connected to the keyboard, the mouse, the screen, closed over, put it in clamshell mode and essentially use it as a hard drive only. Now, I know that this is not always possible, I know that a lot of people use the laptops because they need the camera for Teams, etc., etc. And we can get external um, webcams. But I do know that the majority of people that have a laptop, even if they've got two screens, will still use the laptop as an additional screen. So, again, uh, ideally, 
the laptop, if you ha have it connected to external devices, should essentially be the hard drive. So you have your image in front of you at eye level, arm distance away from you. Keyboard close enough so that your shoulders are relaxed, arms are by your side. So you've got your keyboard 8 to 10 centimeters from you. You've got your screen at arm's length, level with your eye line, allowing you to sit back in a chair and look forward. But if you are going to use the laptop at the workstation, there are ways you can do it, of course, and I do it myself. I use my laptop as my second screen. Now, it is a reference screen and it's elevated on a laptop stand. So my laptop screen and my monitor screen are exactly the same height. My laptop is elevated. I use it as a secondary screen. I do 80% of my work on the big screen. If you do not have the space to accommodate a monitor, the laptop at the very minimum should be elevated on a laptop riser and connected to a keyboard and mouse. Space is not an issue anymore. You can get collapsible or foldable laptop risers. You can get compact keyboards that can all be tidied away. They're very light, they're very portable, and they can all be tidied away in your laptop bag at the end of the day, which is really useful, obviously, if you're working on the road, if you're at like a multi-use space like your kitchen table or your dresser at home, or if you're in a co-working hub. So if you're going to work in one of these co-working hubs, where you go in and it's just a desk and a chair. Great. Bring the laptop stand, the keyboard, and mouse with you. Set it all up. Keep it in your bag. If you've become used to using the laptop keyboard and you like the way that that keyboard feels versus the kind of more traditional office keyboards, there's plenty of external keyboards that you can get. That and touchpads as well. If you prefer the touchpad to the mouse, you can get external touchpads and they feel very, very similar to the laptop keyboards. They're very low, prof low profile, very easy to use. Your standard office keyboard or mouse are not the only device options out there. So that's not an excuse either. You can get other more low profile and more compact devices. And the last thing I'll say about trying to reduce adverse postures, make sure you're up to date with your eye test. Should be done every two years. Especially like me, you're getting on an age your near vision will start to go. So keep on top of it. Get your eyes tested. Let them know you work with a computer and they will give you glasses if they think you need them to help allow you to sit back and read what's on your screen without leaning forward and squinting at it. So that's how we reduce adverse postures. Ideally, it's about having the screen and the keyboard as separate devices and ensuring that both are positioned correctly. Reducing contact stress is next. So when you're connected to your devices, make sure that the keyboard and mouse are either level with or just below your resting elbow position. The best position will depend on the type of device that you're using and how you type. But my guideline to people is when you have your hand on your mouse, and when you have your hand on your keyboard, you should not be able to feel the corner of your table on the underside of your forearm. It's okay to feel the surface of the table. And obviously I know we're supposed to float our hands when we type. A lot of us don't, myself included, if you're not a touch typist. But when you have your hand in particular on the mouse, yes, you should be able to feel the surface of the table, but not the edge of it. That's how you know you're too low. And that by adjusting that position to get rid of that contact off the edge of the table or edge of the laptop, You'll minimize your contact stress. And the last one, and this goes for no matter how you're working on a computer, avoid prolonged static positions. Everyone should leave their desk, laptop or computer, whatever it may be, home or office, at least every 45 minutes. Go do something else. Go walk around, go get a glass of water, go chat to a colleague, whatever it needs to be. Should be every 45 minutes. However, if you have to use the laptop for whatever reason. If the laptop is the only option to you, the longest continuous time, I recommend you sit there is 30 minutes before you get up and walk around to allow your muscles to relax, to allow your eyes to relax, to allow all your organs in your body to decompress and allow your discs decompress and to give you a break, to give your circulation system a boost Get the muscles refreshed and come back. So 
because if you cannot reduce the risk of the adverse postures for whatever reason you have to work off the laptop that day well then what you need to do is reduce your exposure by taking frequent breaks every 45 minutes if you've got your setup correct and i would say every 30 minutes if you're using a laptop only laptop like they're not going anywhere in some form they're going to be here to stay for the foreseeable future so we need to focus on making sure that we are using them in a manner that is safe and in a manner that allows us to have minimum stress on the body while we're using them to try and ensure that they have a minimum negative impact on our health and our well-being. As always, I'll put the link to the blog on this episode in the show notes. In that blog, I do have images of the different kind of variations of setups that I see for people when they're using laptops at home and in the office and a quick, quick visual on what is right, what is wrong, what is optimal, what is not and have a look and maybe compare it to your own setup and see if yours is maybe a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, as always, I'll put my social media details in the show notes if anyone wants to give me a follow and if there are any episodes or any topics that you want me to cover, please reach out. The next topic I have coming up actually is a suggestion from a while ago. I apologise, it took me a while to get to it. We will be stepping out of the office and going to a different workplace in the next episode. Really, really looking forward to that. As always, you can email me. My email details are in the show notes. And until next time, everybody, stay well.